Hello, hello, everyone, and good morning. We are here at Johnston County 911, North Carolina, and we are doing our live broadcast. This is the second one that we're doing for this week, and uh, we are going to get started here in just one moment, where we're going to hit our countdown, and then we're going to jump right in. Hello, hello, and we are back once again. Um, this is this week has been phenomenal, and uh, I, I started out my tour at Burt County nine one one. And actually, you know what? Let's just let's let's get to that here in just a moment. I want to introduce my guest here because this has been so good, and uh, it's awesome to be here with you again. Yes. We did the, we did a version of this last year, and I am here with Pokey Harris as well as David. They are with the North Carolina nine one one board. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, sir. And I am so sorry I could not be here in person this week. Um, I was away in San Diego, as you know. We were kind of sort of live from there, going in and out, talking about the things we're doing here in North Carolina. But we're so glad to have you here. These folks, our telecommunicators, our heroes, um, there, there are not a lot of ways that we can acknowledge them and, and tell them how much we appreciate them. But if we can just bring a little bit of time to, to that this is their time and our shout outs to them. So hopefully we're tying this nice little gift in a bow for Telecommunicator Week. Thank you, friend, for being here. We certainly appreciate it. Of I know course. I know next week you're going to be elsewhere. So I'm glad that we could make our celebration two weeks. So that's what we're doing. So thank you so much. No, thank you. It has been very special to be out here with some of the best 9 professionals in the state. And uh, it was it was very powerful both times, especially for the Imagine Listening session the amount of people who were sharing stories, sharing stories out loud. Yes. And I will I will say this, both times, especially yesterday when I was in here, and, and David, I don't know if you, you noticed this, but when I was first talking and explaining some of the stuff we were going to be doing, the looks on everyone's faces of this is not your regular or usual training that we were getting into because yes. I was like, we're going to be learning from each other. And most importantly, yes. you are going to be learning about yourself. Yes. And, <laughs> and what I, the, the text messages coming back and forth to me is we need to make some more classes happen. They want you back. Oh, that so, is, that is amazing. So, uh, so Angie Turberville, our training education training coordinator, I know you're listening. So, so we will need to, to make this happen when we can offer uh, educational opportunities that the telecommunicators are engaged. They feel like that it's time well spent mm -hmm. away from their job. And as you know, the staffing shortages and folks being away and not behind that headset when they can actually add a true value to that, then we need to step back and say, Hey, we need to do that again, but getting a lot of positive feedback, a lot. Amazing. That is excellent. And and for those who are watching and listening, who might not know everything that, uh, that you all do with the North Carolina 911 board, you know, you're the executive director. Yes, so um, if you could, for those who are watching My and listening, own. a little background. Please. Okay. So, uh, so the North Carolina 911 board, very different uh, from a lot of 911, um, um, operations or governance structures across the country. We have a North Carolina 911 board. Our board is responsible for the receipt of the 911 service charge across the, the state. Uh, and then that is distributed to the 911 centers uh, based on a formula through our grant program, our wonderful next gen 911 project that we have. Uh, and I have the opportunity of uh, sitting in front of the boat and leading a whole group of folks, a, a team of about 17 folks, like David serving as the regional coordinator here, uh, that we were able to provide assistance to the 911 centers, whether it's technical support, uh, operational support, uh, our education and training program that we've just launched. So we have an opportunity to bring those things to the PSAPs to help them um, do their jobs and to the telecommunicators and do their jobs and to bring training like, like you were talking about. So in our 911 board, it, they are so supportive of training opportunities, uh, the recruitment portion of what we need to do for our telecommunicators. So uh, I get to just uh, sign my name to all the documents. So, so all the, all these folks here, they, they're the ones that do the work 
and our, and our, and our awesome 911 board, uh, our uh, chair of the board uh, who you met last year, mm -hmm. Jim Weaver, unfortunately his schedule did not work for him to be with us. And he, he definitely has says shout out to all the telecommunicators. Uh, they are near and dear to his heart as well. Perfect. And, and David, you were here with me yesterday and a colleague of yours and, you know, Kristen and everyone else uh, over at Burke County. All of you have been awesome. Thank you so much for everything. But um, what about you, David? Your, your part in uh, on the board. What do you yep. do? So I'm a, the South Central Regional Coordinator for the Now One Board. Um, our main mission is uh, the main liaison between the Now One Board and the PSAPs. So we um, we handle anything from operations, financial, um, you know, mental health support. Um, you know, we're, we're we're big on that. Um, so we kind of you know coordinate all that and get the the resources that the, the PSAPs need from the board. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And and Johnston County is one of the, uh, yes. one of the counties in his region. Yep. So my my region basically um, from Wake County, Raleigh, over to Cleveland County, just west of uh, Charlotte. But Johnston County is is one of my regions. Yep. Excellent. You know, we had something happen last year that was pretty interesting, and, and you were just mentioning this oh, to me. Oh, I, I want to make sure yes, to put this out I know, there. <laughs> and I hate she can't be with us today. And and I'm sure as soon as I say this, my phone's good. I'm going to get a text. But <laughs> at the conclusion of of the tour last year, yes, we had been back to back at all the the very uh, various uh, PSAPs that we've been doing the live the live broadcast. For whatever reason, uh, uh, as you all know, Sarah Templeton is our uh, administrative officer. She she's our handler, is what she is. She takes <laughs> care of us. <laughs> and she was, you know, she was wrapping us all up. And and for whatever reason, off the cuff, I just said, "Well, Sarah will be here next year taking care of us, um, unless she's pregnant or something." And then her mom started texting, "Is there something I don't know?" Ricardo, guess what? Sarah's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna have a baby in Yay, July. congratulations. Yeah, you know, Sarah. Yes. Please don't be mad at me because I announced it to the world. But yes, <laughs> yes, we, we were just uh, so so it's not that I, I don't think I talked that into being, but but now we're concerned we're gonna have a little Sarah running around. Mm -hmm. But no, the world needs more Sarah Templeton. They that do is because awesome. Because she keeps us, you know, she keeps us on us our toes. Uh, meeting Sarah, you, you know that she uh, she came from a telecommunicator background, and now now she does uh, manage a, a, a most of what we do. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited. And then also, I'm sure you, you noticed, Kristen's having a baby too. Yes, what? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So, she probably didn't say that. Now she's going to come to the door. So. She's going she's to be looking yeah, right into yeah, the door know, right there. Like. So, so the the wonderful part about this is so. Uh, Sarah will go out and mm -hmm. have the baby, that little bundle of joy. She comes back, and then Kristen goes out to have her little bundle of joy, and then she comes back, and then Auntie P gets to have two little babies. <laughs> Auntie P, I <laughs> love Auntie that. P, I love yeah. that. So yes. that's what my nieces and nephews call me. But but we have a lot of excitement, and, and it's good in our office that that we get to share things like that with our PSAP family, with our telecommunicator family. That because we're a family. You know, you've been there. Right. You, you yes. become a family. Yes. It's it's that it's that environment that other folks just don't understand. You're a family, and when when you're having babies, everybody becomes Auntie P and our our, our Mima, the extended Mima or Nana. So we're we're excited about that. You know, I well before I say what I'm going to say here, uh, Sarah actually pumped, uh, popped in here oh, to no. the uh, audience, oh, no. and uh, I'm putting oh, it on the screen right oh, now. No. She says, "Thank you. The team is growing." Oh, oh <laughs> nice. yay, yay. yeah, yeah. Um, I was I was telling everyone yesterday, and I mentioned this is Burke County as well, but it hit me more here for for whatever reason. Maybe I had just a little bit more time to reflect from the time that I first mentioned it to when I was here. But I was telling folks as you as you talk about family and everything, I feel a special connection to this state because when I first started everything that I do, I was invited to my very first National Nina conference. And I always say this, I say it jokingly, but I mean this seriously mm -hmm. as well. Up until that point, I didn't know that there was a mothership, so to speak, for, for National Nina. I didn't know there was a national. I thought it was all state chapters. So my very first national conference where the podcast and everything started for me going to uh, big conferences was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Wonderful. So Wonderful. I feel that connection. So you can always come home. We're going to put this on our calendar until 
we can't put it on our calendar anymore. <laughs> so you can come back and you can be with us. And, and we're so glad that you have that connection. I know that they talk about making sure that you have barbecue while you were here. Yes. I'm not going to get in that argument. <laughs> uh, actually, th this past week, someone asked me, which which side of the barbecue are you on? And I'm like, the end of the fork. It doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, but, yes. but, but some people just like Duke and Carolina, mm -hmm. they're, they're very serious yes. about their barbecue. Yes, very much. So, but I hope that you got to enjoy some North Carolina barbecue while I you were did. here. I did, yes. And it was amazing. I had some uh, last night. I think the place they, they said it was, um, it was called Soda Sopa is where I, I went. Uh, oh, yes, here. That, yes. That barbecue was excellent. A friend of mine had told me to, to make sure to check out uh, Wilbur's. But yes. when I when I finally got back to the hotel and I got I got ready to go get something to eat, it was going to be closed by the time uh -uh. I got there because they closed uh -huh. at like seven. Yeah. But I found the other place and it was phenomenal, awesome. priced very well. Yeah. And when the portion came out, I said, "Is this what I is this what I ordered?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, it, it, "I didn't think it was going to be that much." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was enough for like three people. But I I did my best. I about took it down. <laughs> So, and I'm sure, and I'm just having this thought, I'm sure if we did a study that, to see how many uh, PSAPs get get barbecue brought in, maybe maybe next year we do like a recipe or, mm. you know, a barbecue. That would be cool. Barbecue. Yes. Uh -oh. Get everyone. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, okay. the ideas are already yeah. Yeah. rolling. Hey, Angie, add this to the list for, for telecommunicator. <laughs> yes, for week. sure. PSAP barbecue cook-off. Oh, and then we would go and eat barbecue. Yeah, that's oh, a, I mean, oh. how can you how can you argue with this plan? I, okay. I am all about that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so really quick before we wrap up here, because yes. we are uh, we're, we're coming up on our time and everything. We've got a good morning from um, and I'm going to I apologize. Uh, is it Brunswick? Brunswick. Brunswick. OK, Hi, Brunswick County. And then there's another one here that I don't even want to attempt to try. But it's the first part of it is edge. Edgecombe. Edgecombe. Oh. Edgecombe. Edgecombe. Okay. See, I, I wouldn't have said that. I would have. I would have thrown the, the B part in there because yeah. I'm from up north. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, Angie just jumped in here as well. She goes, "I am always up for good barbecue." Exactly. Yep. Yep. So Perfect. Very, very so good, so. as we wrap up this piece, yes. I just want to say thank you for everything thank for this you. partnership. It has been amazing, yes. and for you, for the both of you, some closing uh, remarks here on just how important. National Public Safety Communicator Week is, but not just the week, but every single day. Every single mm -hmm. day, yeah. Uh, we focus on this week, and I guess now we've turned it into two weeks here, just to to give attention to those those true heroes. But it's every day. It it's is. it's twenty four seven, yes. three sixty five. Um, if the if the general public really knew these what these folks do, um, and everybody here hears me tell this all the time about uh, from the cats in the trees to the two year old in the pool. Um, they they are the first first responders there's no way around it and these folks are there uh they start the the system they start that uh, that cycle of of response that cycle of life care they start it uh, they cannot be removed from that. Uh, they are as critical as anyone else, probably the most critical. And now in North Carolina, where, of course, it's required for the EMD uh, that we we have all of our folks are trained, uh, that they can they can begin those instructions even before wheels start turning out of bay doors. So so that makes a difference for our citizens. And, that you know, we're 3000 plus strong of telecommunicators here in North Carolina. Uh, and each and every one of them, they're heroes to us. Amazing. And they're heroes to the community. They just don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you both for being thank on. Thank yes. You. Thank you. This is awesome. And we've got a couple more folks that are going to be coming yep. in. Actually, we've got several folks yes. that are going to be coming in. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and switch this up Wonderful. here and uh, we're going to continue. Great. All right. Sounds All right. Good. I'll see you when uh, when we take our first break at 11. Yes. So yeah, very here we good. go. So who are we calling? We're, uh, so I we've got uh, uh, Brett and yep. uh, Rick coming yep. in next. Yep. So uh, these are wonderful folks here in the county. Of course, Rick, uh, um, Brett runs the, the PSAT, known him for many years. And then the county manager, uh, Rick Hester, can't ask for a better county manager. How do I know that? I live in Johnston County. So, oh, so, oh look yes, I, yeah. So I'm home. I'm home. So that so makes sense. Good folks. And and uh, I think they're outside the door. Yeah, they're are they coming. They're coming in. It looks like it. It's, they were they were just finding out that we were going to be live. It's the thing yes, too. Yes, yes. They thought it was just <laughs> audio. Uh, audio not yes, video. yeah. No, nope, so, it's video. Come on, Brett. So they're they're getting. Hey, Brett Renfro. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. All right, here we go. Every, so, 
So who gets the headset? Uh, I mean, you can wear the headset if you want, or you can just sit it here and you can just sit in front of the microphone because you can still you hear me. Right I just here. have mine on come so that on. I can hear you better. Come, come on. Come on, guys. Have a seat. Have a seat. I'm going to step out. I am going to grab just a, a quick, y'all know I'm going to do a selfie. <laughs> 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 Hug is a selfie queen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So if you can scoot this way just a little more. Sure. And then uh, Rick, yes, if you can scoot in here just a little more as well. All right. Just so that I've got you at least sitting in the middle of the microphone so that I can still pick up your audio okay. and such. All right. So we continue on here for, once again, National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week 2024 here in Johnson County, 911, North Carolina. And to my right is Brett Renfro. Is that right? That is correct. Oh, okay. Very <laughs> Just want to make sure I'm getting everyone's names right. I don't want to butcher it. And uh, he is the 911 director. And uh, to his right is Rick Hester and the Johnson County County Manager. So hello, both of you. How are you doing today? Great. Hope you are. Thank you. Yes, it has been excellent. You know, we were talking earlier before we went live and everything about just kind of the weather and then just eating barbecue and stuff. And, you know, I just I love North Carolina. This is just a great state. And state. yeah, it's been it's been excellent here. And also being here with uh, with all the folks you know, all these 911 professionals and everything they're doing. Before we get into talking about uh, this amazing building that you have here, I'm just in awe of it, really. Um, I want to know. You know, what does National Public Safety Communicators Week mean to you? Um, for me, um, I sat the chair. Um, I'm in my going on my 31st year and I sat the chair from um, early on in my career as a green telecommunicator and went through all the various positions. But for me, it's about our people. Mm -hmm. Our people are our biggest resource. Uh, if we don't take care of our people, then, you know, we can't, they can't perform. They can't do their jobs. And it's about looking after them and it's, uh, it's about thanking them uh, properly for what they've done and what they do every day because they see the fire truck when it pulls up. They see the police car when it pulls up. They see the ambulance pull up because everybody has their part to do. It's just that the telecommunicator is behind the scenes. They're, they're not seen but they're always heard. Right. And um, for me, it's about honoring our people and thanking them properly. That's amazing. I, I love that. And just that mentality as well, because as you know, uh, you know, the both of you throughout the entire country, everyone is so short staffed. And I was asking, uh, I've been asking a few people, you know, what do you think is, you know, part of that issue? And why, why is it the people are not staying? Is it because of that environment? Is it because maybe some places there's a little more toxicity and people don't want to be in a spot like that? I mean, what are, what do you think some of those issues are? And, and, you know, Mr. Hester as well, your thought process on that is not just 911. There's a lot of places, but specifically as we're here, why do you think people don't stay and how do we get people to stay? Well, I am, I am a very fortunate now one director for, Johnston County in the fact that we are fully staffed. Um, that is so amazing. That is a, that's a culmination of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, one is support from um, my, my manager, Mr. Rick Hester here and our board of commissioners. Um, one of their six priorities at six and there are our main priorities that our county has is county employees and they support us um, that there's, you know, I guess technically there is an ends, but I would say to no end, they support their employees. They look after us, they take care of us. Um, they listen to what we have to say and they mm -hmm. look at our needs and they try to fulfill those needs as, as best they can. And um, I, I just think it's back to how you treat your people. Um, you know, everybody needs a paycheck because you have obligations. You've got, you know, you got to have a place to live. You got to have food to eat. You got to have a car to get around or transportation, but, it's not always about those things. It's a, some, a lot of times for a lot of people, it's about being appreciated. Right. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I agree. And I, um, I, as, as, as Brett said, uh, board of County commissioners, um, they are, and also public safety is a, is a priority. And so when you tie those in together, I mean it, and, and, and Brett is a great leader. And so we've got great leadership and he's got a great team there. Here and I think 
our culture is another big important yes. piece of it. It's a great place to work. And as Brett said, um, I mean, what's more important than public safety? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but, and then to have this facility um, and, and cause it, it's a tough job what they're doing, you know, telecommunicators to deal with, some, you know, y'all know better than me. It's a very difficult situations. And, and I think we're positioned well here in Johnson County, got great employees, a great place to work, safe place to work mm -hmm. and, and strong support from the board of commissioners. Yes. And, uh, with that combination, uh, it's a it's it's a winning formula. I I fully agree. Definitely a win win for everyone involved. And uh, the <laughs> it was funny the one table in the end your your group that was there. Uh, there was a couple times when I was joking with them, and they said, "We're the rambunctious crowd over here." And I was like, <laughs> "I can tell that you love what you do, yes. and that you're in a good environment." And 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 it was just I I just just feel it from them. You know, it was that vibe. Well, your, one of your comments yesterday in the uh, class was, you know, and, and a, a, a topic that you, you spoke about was, you know, not eating our young. Mm -hmm. When we have new employees come in that are not as experienced as a veteran person, that's one of the things that we stand on. You know, you, you can treat a person badly and they won't stay. Mm -hmm. But if you treat them well and you, you encourage them and you lift them up, they're they will always do more. They'll always be willing to help. They'll always be willing to participate and go beyond what is honestly what's expected of them. Um, and that's our mentality here. And we that's the kind of support that I have as a director from my leadership. And I've had a good leader. I've had former directors that were absolutely wonderful leaders um, to in my career mm -hmm. to lead me and mentor me. And I just followed through with, you know, what I've learned and what I've been taught and, you know, things that have happened. So um, I think looking after your people and taking care of it, and it just shows the county's commitment. We're in a new facility. We were in a facility that was turned into a 911 center because we didn't have space. We didn't have anywhere else to go. And this facility was built to be a 911 center. And it just shows the commitment that we have to, uh, taking care of public safety, looking after our employees, along with all the other things that our county has uh, openly committed to. It's it, it just the way that, that you're saying it, just from everyone, it's it's a complete buy-in. Everyone is in it for the right purposes, for yes. that win. You know, the ultimate goal just for, for everyone to be happy and in a good environment where you want to stay. And also those that are out in the field can feel that as well. And especially those in the community. Now, Unbeknownst to me, I was eating at the uh, Soda Sopa barbecue joint uh, last <laughs> night, and I just happened to be by the, uh, you said it was a courthouse, right? Yes, it was where yes. the old dispatch center was. It was down yes. in the basement. But now we are in this state-of-the-art building. Uh, please yes. tell me about this because I, it, me telling you and even a few pictures, it doesn't do it justice. Like You have to see this, and it is, it is just amazing. Please. Um, it's a 53,000-square-foot uh, building. Uh, it's all of public safety uh, response is all in one location now, um, from 911 where it starts, all the way to our county EMS system, our county fire marshals that look after the fire side. Um, each of the fire departments, there's 23 fire departments in the county, are separate entities, but we we have we work together. We are, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge team, is yes. what I would call it. It's just a huge team. And then, of course, we look after, we dispatch for the local municipalities, for the police departments, and the sheriff's department is all here. The Johnston County Detention Center is here. And it was a, it's a, it's, it's a big project. And now we're all in one spot. We're all together because that's the part that we look after. That's the part that we do. And everybody's here. I don't have to go across the county. I don't have to do a video call. I can... I can walk to my emergency services director, Kevin Hubbard's office and say, look, you know, here's something I think we need to walk on, work on because he's only 60 steps down the hallway in the same building that I'm in now. If I need to see the sheriff on an issue, he's downstairs. I take an elevator ride or a short walk down the steps and I can be there where the sheriff is and I can have that talk. And we do those things very well because that's one of the things that we talk about at the department head meetings. Mm -hmm. 
this can our county works. I mean, it's just it's scary how they all work together. Nobody has the sand, what I call the sandbox mentality. We all work together. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a part. Yeah, and and you know, um, we're just outside of the emergency operations center here doing this podcast, and uh, you know, when we've had weather events and hurricanes and issues with uh, maybe uh one time we had that issue of 95 with the with the truck truck and chemicals and stuff yes. but anyway um this the emergency operations center provides the space that's needed in the breakout rooms um also for those type of situations we hope we don't have any to deal with <laughs> right yes we've got a good situation <laughs> there in terms of it ever happens and so but anyway i agree with what brett said um we've got great and across the board in Johnston County with about 25 agencies, all the departments work together. Well, there are no fences between agencies and, um, and it's especially true with public safety here because, um, Brett, Kevin Hubbard, Sheriff Bizzle and everybody, yeah. there's no, everybody's here for the same reason. And that's mm -hmm. to take care of people in Johnston County, quite frankly, taking care of people that are not from Johnson County. There's so many people traveling through yes. right. Staying yeah. if something happens on 95 or 40. So yes. you know, there's a lot of responsibility there and um, we're just fortunate and, and I'm blessed every day to work with people like Brett Renfro who are <laughs> professionals and dedicated and were involved in the construction of this facility, the sheriff and, and uh, Kevin and Brett involved in the construction of this facility from start to finish on top of the regular job they were doing to make this uh what it is how important i'll give, I'll give you your money for that comment after the okay <laughs> please it's gonna cost you <laughs> right <laughs> we'll get some barbecue yeah uh, <laughs> how important was it for for all of you coming together when you first started this out to make sure that everyone was together and uh just continue to build this i mean I, just a continued camaraderie and you know brotherhood, sisterhood between all of you to come together? Well, I'll just tell you, you know, the, initially, mm -hmm. and we're just steps away from the detention center, which is a brand new facility as well, same campus. So uh, initially that project was bid out. And, and at the time it was prior to things going so crazy with cost, you know, prior to COVID, I think it was, Brett. It was. And um, so we got we hit it just right with the bidding cycle there. And so we we're like, well, why don't we go ahead and just do this public safety center too? It was sort of a phase two anyway, mm -hmm. but we didn't know. $12 when, million. Dollars. Yeah. We didn't know when phase two was going to take place, but we said, let's go ahead and do it. The commissioners were all on board with it. And it turned out to be a great thing to go ahead and get that done, especially not long thereafter construction costs and everything just went through the roof, you know, and, 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 uh, so we hit it just right and and but but as far as having to come together and say hey how are we going to work together we didn't even really have to have that conversation because they already do it that's they amazing already work together and we had so many people that with and brett helped me with this but we had our director of buildings and grounds daniel click yes. heavily involved in these facilities jeff howard, jeff howard his team with um tech services um jimmy boykin jimmy who boykin. came on as an independent uh sort of a guide for us and a yes. wonderful wonderful man at other agencies it took so many agencies yes. to make inspections, it all work inspections, building inspections that's right do those things but uh business. finance finance that's a oh, big part yeah, so yeah, absolutely and uh but anyway <clears> it um we didn't have to have a meeting about how we're going to work together because it's just what we do our 911 board um, yeah, a lot of the equipment that came into my new center um, was through grants that I was able to or our department was able to work through. Um, we received a, almost a two million dollar grant from our North Carolina 91 board through the grant process. So opportunities there are, are, are good for that. I am jealous. <laughs> because you know this there's there's a lot of places or you know just thinking back sometimes you know it, it took a little bit for uh where i was working before to kind of come together like we were working together sure. but it wasn't like 
together together. Right. And so what we ended up doing is we would have, let's just say, for example, the sheriff's department, you know, if they had a new deputy coming on, we would have them come in, sit, sit along with us for a little bit. Or of course we were as dispatch, part of our training, we were doing ride along so we could see what it was like. Well, then we started doing even more of that and then doing team <laughs> building to the point where we would have other agencies come in mm -hmm. for, you know, dinners or anything right. like that. And then we're all learning from each other. We understand what it's like for them. They understand what it's like for us. And now we're even more so together. And the culture has completely changed in a lot of different places, especially where I was at before. But it, it took it took a lot of us in dispatch just really pushing for all of this to say, this is how we're going to come together, simply by learning from each other. Sure. Mm -hmm. So this has been awesome to have uh, to have the both of you on to hear more about the facilities and everything for for those who and, and and you said that you you are you're good to go but if you had any um, any other opportunities for someone to join your team and someone is thinking about getting into public safety or nine one one specifically what would you tell them? Um, in in the in the nine one one world. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, in today's 911 world, do your research, find out what you want to do because it's it, there's a there's a poster in our in our industry, you've probably seen it. There's a giant iceberg in the water. Yes. You see the tip of the iceberg that sticks out of the water, and that's what the public's reaction is or what their expectation or what their thought process is, but there's just so much more to it. Because mm -hmm. you don't see the big part of the iceberg under the water. So all those things, the perception, there's more to 911. It's super, super important. And it's one of those jobs you've got to give your all. You, you, you've got to give 100% every time you step to that uh, mic or to that console. And that's what I'm blessed to have is a crew of people that are willing to do that. Awesome. And just one last question for the both of you as we kind of wrap up this portion of the segment here for this live broadcast. What does National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week mean to you? Not just next week when we celebrate the actual week, but every day that, you know, these folks are, are working and doing everything that they do. You know, I'll say things, that, and we've heard this in, in other areas, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, while I'm thankful for National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, because that's one that we set aside. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be the other 51 weeks of the year have to be National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, because you need to make sure those people understand that they're just as important in those other 51 weeks as they are in that one week that you do it as a national event. That's great. It's a wonderful thing. But I think you have to make sure that those people understand they're just as important on January 1st as they are on December 1st. Amazing. Thank you very much. And, and, and you, sir, Mr. Hester. I agree. It was the same thought I had um, that um, we need to make sure that what they do is celebrated year round. And, and I think about it often with local, uh, especially with county government, where um, so many op different operations are 724, 365, mm -hmm. and public safety is that. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what day of the week it is, no matter what holiday it is, what time of the day or night it is, there are folks there that are re ready there, they're trained and ready to help you because that's where the first emergency, as y'all know better than I do, that's where it all starts is with that 911 call. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you both. This has been amazing. Thanks. And you've Absolutely. got a great facility. And I just love the way, you know, the, your mindset, you know, the both of you, you know, it, it's it's the buy in from everyone. And I it can just again, I can feel it when I come in here. And uh, the vibe is just a good one. Thank you for the hospitality. It has just Absolutely. been amazing. Thank, thank, thank you so you. much. Nice thank to you meet you. Me. Yes, yeah, nice to meet you as well. Thank I you. also really quick, I'll say, I found out that Mr. Hester was also in broadcasting at, at a Way time, back. right? That's right. My I can hear. Grew, I can hear it in your voice. That is my awesome. Family uh, grew up <laughs> in the radio business, so when I was uh, fourteen and fifteen years old, on the holidays, my dad would want his the employees to be with their families. Mm -hmm. So he'd send me up there, and I'd run all the, I'd run, I'd play the records, and it was cool. 
That's you know? awesome right there. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent. That is and great. Sports broadcast. Yeah, did some, some of that too. Yeah. yeah. That is I, yeah, I can hear it in your voice yeah, just like, in in my headphones. It's like yeah, you, I would have loved to have listened to you while you were thank on there. That's he's awesome. Good. He's very good. Thank you. Well, thank you both for for being here and for uh, for everything that you do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we're going to be uh, jumping in. I think they're going to be sending in a couple of other people here, and uh, we'll see who they send us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you. Yes, it was nice to meet you as well. Share the bread. Thank you. Buddy. Thanks, sir. All right, so it looks like we've got. Uh, Greg, who will be coming in, I believe. Should be myself, Kevin. Is that right? Um, looks like uh, they, had, the they would... Sheriff and Kevin, I think, is next. All Should right. be. I think we just we just kind of switched. We switched two places. We switched second and third. Gotcha. Okay. So while we have people that are switching out and everything... Um, I had a, I had a few moments with your with your folks. Uh, I believe it was Patrick, and and yes. a few others. We were outside. I found out that he is a he's a pro wrestling fan like myself. He and is. we were talking. We were talking uh, pro wrestling, and uh, I actually I have a picture of him because uh, we were outside when we were out there. A good friend of mine who's a dispatcher out of Alaska. Okay. Uh, her name is Stacy Day. She is a pro wrestling fan as well, and she had a a legit heavy like championship belt made for me with my name on it and wow. in the middle it has my i am 911 logo on there nice. so i had showed him a picture and, and he goes can i see it and i said yeah man so we were outside and we were talking and i got some pictures and we're posing with the championship wow. belt <laughs> patrick is a really good guy um we we have a um every year we we or the telecommunicators on the floor admin we don't participate in it other mm -hmm. than um i provide some gifts for the winners so we do a supervisor of the year or excuse me back we do a telecommunicator of the year assistant supervisor of the year and a supervisor of the year and they're all voted on by their peers oh I admin love that. doesn't play a part in it we don't pick it's by them and it's secret ballot and patrick was the uh telecommunicator of the year our first year we did it and um, oh wow he came from something totally different than a public safety background so that's what i heard yeah he was telling me uh about the restaurant business yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah. So, Brett, I think you're going to stay in here with Chief Tart. Okay. All right. So, and then, at, then after that, I think the sheriff's coming. Yeah, it's Sheriff. Hello. Yes. Very sheriff. nice to meet you, sir. Yes. Very nice. So, and you know what? I remember something I did last year. Do you remember this? Ricardo, I'd just go in and say, hey, y'all, every now and then. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was Pokey. She's yes, jumping in here. We're... <laughs> How did you do the introduction, Brett? Yes, please do so. Thank you very much, sir, for coming in. Thank you. And if you if you could scoot in just a little sure. more, actually, and uh, there we go, we got you on camera here. All right, and then your audio will pick up. And uh, um, Chief Greg Tart, um, he is one of our uh, police chiefs here in our county. Um, again, we work super well together with him and his staff. Uh, he's the Clay town of Clayton police chief. And Clayton is the fastest growing town in North Carolina. Is that correct? Am I right in that? Or one it's of the fast? It's one of the fastest growing. It's the fastest growing town in this county, which yes. is the fastest growing yes. county in the state. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, but uh, I don't know where we rank as far as fastest growing in the whole state, but I would, I, I think the last numbers I saw, we were probably in the top 10. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Well, it is is very. Uh, it's, it's great to meet you and to have you here. And uh, can we get a little uh, background? You know, sure. on how did you start out in public safety? Um, I started my career in 1989. Mm -hmm. um, I was a special agent with the State Bureau of Investigation, where I retired in January of 2018 after 30 years. I retired as a deputy director um, and work part-time with the sheriff down here and I got one of his midnight phone calls and said, Hey, uh, we need a police chief. Were you interested? And I, you know, I've been out. I wasn't really sure I wanted to go back full time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I had to do some soul searching to get my mind right. I agreed to do it on an interim basis. And after three months, I'm still here. So it's been about three and a half years. <laughs> I wasn't smart enough to stay retired. I guess. Well, is it, is, is it one of those things where, you know, a lot of people say that when you get into public safety, even if you've never been in it before, um, it just, it kind of gets into your blood right away and you're just, oh, yeah. you're in it. I mean, it's, it's a calling. Mm -hmm. It's not a job. I think anybody who's in this business for any amount of time would tell you the same thing is you, you either have it or you don't. And in today's world, I mean, times have obviously changed. I've started my 36th year mm -hmm. in law enforcement and times have obviously changed. And the commitment that you get nowadays from folks is not what it used to be. Right. You rarely see, you know, new hires stay at one department in their entire career, kind of like I did. That's just kind of rare nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think if you stay in it for any amount of time, then, you know, your heart's in it, which it has to be to be able to do it. And so, yeah, it, it's a calling. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I, I got to love that because <laughs> there are – I'm a firm believer that there are certain points in our career, whether it be early on or – well, a lot of times early on where something happens where you you feel it. It's that, that moment where you know – that you're where you're supposed to be and so for example for me it was a couple domestic calls that i had taken and i thought you know i'm i'm in the right place this is what i was meant to do and i i stayed with it when i when i left um uh, dispatch that is when i retired out i mean it was i was doing dispatch for 13 years but i ended up leaving to continue doing basically what it is that i do now and it's it's helping uh 9 -1 professionals share their stories to get some of those harder calls out as more of a mental health and wellness type thing right. and and i feel like a lot of folks it's the same way you know maybe you even had a moment where you thought you know what i, I know that this is where i'm supposed to be well fortunately or unfortunately um I was a homicide investigator for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've been all over the state and worked some of the the largest and the most tragic homicides that you could imagine. And um, for me, early on in my career, being able to solve a murder was when I knew I was in the right where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never lost that. Even today, you know, if, if we're unfortunate enough to have one in our town and, um, you know, I'm right out there with them because I have so many young folks now and I don't want to be that mother hen type where I'm standing over and telling them what to do. But sometimes right. I have to do that. Yes. And, and that's just it's in my heart. And, you know, I want them to learn the right way. And, you know, if I see them about to make a mistake or do something, you know, I may suggest, Hey, you might want to try this or try that. And so, yeah, I mean, it, I knew early on in my career, I always thought I'd be a, when I graduated high school and went to college, I'd be a coach mm -hmm. and a teacher. That's kind of what I had in my brain. I don't know when I did the 180 and went in this line <laughs> of work, what, what day that was, <laughs> right? but it was, it was probably never my intent to do it. But when I got in and I realized early on, yeah, I'm, I'm where I need to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and you, you ended up doing basically what you wanted to do to begin with in a way with the mentorship and, and everyone, you know, the teaching and everything, your wealth of knowledge. I can just imagine, as you said, you know, you still go out there with them and that has to throw a lot of respect from them to you as well to say, you know, he's, he's here with us and he understands he's been there and, you know, he's, he's teaching us and dropping that knowledge that just, really builds that trust and rapport and camaraderie. So I, I, I salute you and all of you who, who continue doing that. Absolutely. I mean, we were just talking before I came in here and Johnston County is my home. I grew up here in the Clayton mm -hmm. Cleveland area. And uh, I've seen this county change just from the law enforcement side. We were just talking before I came in here about, you know, the sheriff's office and I can remember there was one, maybe two at the most dispatchers for this entire county. Yes. Uh, and oh, they were wow. crammed in a room, probably not not, not, not much bigger than this room. It was, oh, no way. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, and when they built the annex on the courthouse, was where they moved from to here, they thought they had the Taj Mahal. And it was just oh, right. a short period of time they had outgrown that. So coming out here, I, I took a tour out here last week, and I was amazed, and which is it was well needed, obviously, but mm -hmm. the growth and it's going to continue. It's, it's like our department. Um, 
you know, we're up to 64 sworn officers. And when I, when I went to work there, we had about 45. Wow. And, and so, you know, the town has supported me and asking for new folks, but we have to, cause we were behind and it's the same way with the County. I mean, you, you can't, I can't, I won't say we can't keep up with growth, but I don't know to where we get ahead of it, mm -hmm. but we have to work to stay at least steady with it because it's not going to stop. Now, is, do you feel like it's just basically because of um, the times, you know, at, the time has changed. There's, there's a lot of people coming in, as you said, that the town's growing and everything else. So you have to kind of plan for that in a way to have more people. Um, is that basically, you know, it, you feel like it's just cause it's, it's just growing more and just sign of the times. I, I think in a leadership role, you know, other than the day to day stuff that goes on, you have to plan for the future. Right. Yeah. You have to Absolutely. be able to look ahead and say, Absolutely. this is coming. We need to start preparing for it now rather than it get here and then mm -hmm. start trying to catch up to it. That's when you get in trouble sometimes. And, you know, this building here and that jail and, <laughs> Like I said, I've been all over the state and and probably every county there is, and you know, seeing where they came from to where they are now is remarkable to me. But it's much needed, right? right? Because it's only going to keep getting bigger, and there'll be a point in time. I don't know that we'll be around to see it. They'll <laughs> outgrow this, <laughs> right? You know, now they got room to add on to it if they need to. Yeah. There, I'll, that will I'll, be a time. I'll help you. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make me a wheelchair rat. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna be here. Bro. We're gonna be here, Chief. I it's, hope so. I, I, I love that that thought process of the, the big picture, right? I mean, it's like anything, you know, for, uh, you know, big disasters or whichever, you know, a lot of places run drills, you're running all this uh, preparedness. And it's basically, like you said, you're just, you're planning for the future because anything can happen. Yeah. So you've got all of this is going on. And just to touch on really quick, um, you know, just kind of the technology. You've been in public safety for a long time and, so here's the question, and, and the both of you really, how has the technology changed from around the time you started to now? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, when I first started, we were on punch cards. I, you're probably like the third person that I've met who has told me about, yeah, yeah punch yeah. cards, yes. We, we had, we had it looked like a time, it would basically was a time clock and they were color coded so you mm -hmm. hand wrote everything on there and now we have computer systems that you know we never at that point in time we never even dreamed of yeah and now i can send everything to to him you know through our cad system through mcts through freedom apps to his phone to uh, devices in the car, his officers, they can do their reports in the car. They can submit them um, through a Wi-Fi connection. There is no more sitting down handwriting <laughs> reports. It's, it's right. all, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, and now with AVL, you know, being able to see where the officers are or the, the fire trucks or the ambulances or the uh, sheriff's deputies, um, those things have, have, have all changed. That's what we see from our end. Um, everything is um, much simpler. Uh, our state, as um, a, as a state, next gen nine one one. We just brought on our final county out of a hundred counties in the last month um, to complete our um, next gen um, project that the nine one board was doing. So we're all every piece app that it falls under that umbrella is protected. So we're, we're all one and I'll let the chief speak to the things that he well, says. I, I certainly would agree. And I can remember the days before CAD and RMS mm -hmm. and systems like that. Yes. And I'm not a, you know, I'm kind of old school, so I, I have to learn this stuff. These young folks, <laughs> man, they can they blow my mind and stuff that even my own kid, but, um, but the safety side of it, which is, you know, obviously the most critical component it, by, by bringing in technology, like he just mentioned, has increased the chances of keeping an officer safe or firefighter safe or an EMT safe um, or just a general public. You know, if there's a bad wreck somewhere and, and, uh, <laughs> and it's mind boggling because technology changes by the day. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, 
one of the things I have done and the, the tenure I've been at Clayton is you know, we we no longer buy anything electronic. We lease it and we lease it for a period of time because mm-hmm. technology changes so fast. Right. Yes. So when that lease is up, we get the, the next latest and greatest where if we buy it, then we've got it. And then when it when it's outdated, then we got to sell it and buy something else. And, uh, you know, a lot of departments have started to do that. But uh, when I went into the 911 center last week, I was amazed. I mean, you know, of all the technology that's in there and I couldn't even begin to tell you what any of it means. <laughs> um, he's a little modest. He's, he's, but, smart. he's smart. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the, the, I guess the, the, the plus side of it all is it's much needed and it creates, you know, an extra feeling of safety and security for right. not only his folks, but our folks out here. And, and, um, and that's just the world we live in. Technology robs us all. If, 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 if we lost cell phones tomorrow, this country wouldn't know what to do. And just think back, it's only been a few years. Since right. We have, <laughs> yeah. but, but look right. at, you know, the days of landlines and houses, they don't yeah. exist anymore. And that used to be the norm. You know, about eighty percent of our nine one calls are from a cellular device. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's I, I think it's uh, it's it's interesting for everyone. Um, you know, all of us. You know, I when I started in in public safety, it was it was two thousand one. But even even then, during that time, even going up to about two thousand six, when I was working at the central dispatch in Southwest Michigan. Um, I, so I've got a, I still have a training folder and I, when I was there and I was training someone new, I remember pulling something out and it kept unfolding and the person goes, what is that? And I said, that's a teletype. And they said, what is a teletype? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, let me tell oh, you. Well, and they- Dot matrix printer, yeah. probably. Yes, the dot matrix printer. Yes, yeah. you've got that ring, 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 ring. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> yes, that. And and then, you know, just trying to tell my kids even how it, some of that stuff was. I, you know, I've told, well, my older kids, not my younger kids, of course, but my older uh, children, I had told them, you know, there were times where we – we couldn't locate someone. Someone would be calling on a cell phone that didn't have any service, but they could call 911, right? And if I lost the call and a carrier couldn't find them, I'm left. And my mental health and wellness is, you know, taking some impact on that because now I go home wondering whatever happened to that person. But now technology is better where you've got software, different companies and everything where you can actually almost pinpoint where someone is. And I feel like that alone, as, as you were saying as well, sir, that a lot of the technology, it it makes you feel a little more safe and secure because you can find your folks, whether it's them out in the field or for your folks, um, for, for callers that are calling in, you can find them a lot faster and a lot easier and it helps to ease the mind in general. Sure. We want to help the caller, but, uh, plan up what the chief was talking about. Our goal at the end of the day is to make sure all his guys and ladies get to go home. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's a safety issue and a lot of the technology, as he said, you know, has changed a lot of those things over time and it will only get better. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of changes out there now that have, that probably weren't even available a year ago, 12 months ago. And it's, it's just, it's, it's one of those things, you know, and it was interesting when he was talking about the lease, I've heard that before in recent time, you know, it, you start down that road, it, it makes really good sense because, you know, right. Hardware changes and it changes so fast. You know, the first computer I saw was huge, you know, and now a, a cell phone can do a thousand times what that, computer could do you know so but. well when i got into law enforcement i had a digital pager yes that's all i had oh and i had to find a phone booth to make a phone call because yep. we didn't have cell phones <laughs> um and it was just and, and in a hurry number in and we'd get these codes like a one meant right now or two mm-hmm. you know yeah as soon as you can yeah, yeah it was right and, uh, for it. and then it was we like, went right. to the pager system where they had the little keyboard so you, you could send a message on it and then we finally got bag phones back in the day but you had to set them on top of the car to be able to, <laughs> depending on where you're at, to get some reception. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> th- these folks nowadays, these younger folks, they have no clue about this stuff. <laughs> That's right. You know, they, yes. they really don't. And uh, it, it reminds me of a story when my youngest daughter was younger. She was in uh, probably middle school at the time. And um, we went on a field trip. And I don't remember where it was. But it, 
they had a rotary phone display. Yes. Yes. And they those kids had no idea what that was. <laughs> you know, the old right. rotary phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't have made a phone call right. to save their life. They had no clue what that was. Oh. Uh, wow. And that really makes you kind of feel old. <laughs> right. But, but when you think about it, or manual really transmission in a car. Right. It really yeah. hadn't been that long ago when you really, really think about it. Yeah. Um, it's just like you said, technology changes faster than we can keep up with. What, right. what is the latest and greatest today won't be a month from now or two yeah. months from now. Something else. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, just to your point there as well, I was I was telling a story yesterday during the training, and I, I was telling them that um there's some there's some things in our uh, I'm a firm believer that maybe some phone calls or calls or whichever incidents that you go on, they're meant for you to go to. And, and the reason I say that is because maybe there's something in your past, some past experience that you might be able to use with wherever you're going, or let's say a phone call that someone is taking, that you would be able to help that person better than someone else because you've had that experience. Not that the person, the other person wouldn't be able to do a good job, they would do great, but because you have that experience, you're able to do it a bit better or have that deeper connection. So with that said, um, I was training someone and it was, a, it was a domestic call. And when they hung up the phone, there was a pulse sound and I was listening. And my trainee was about to hang up to call back. And I said, don't hang up. And she goes, why? I said, just don't hang up. They're going to they're gonna pick up the phone. They're going to try to call again. And sure enough, they did. They picked up and you can hear the person trying to uh, dial again. And she looks at me and I could see it in her face. Like, how did you know this? So we go through the call and we finish the call. And she goes, how did you know that that was going to happen? And I said, well, one, it's because I'm old. Okay. <laughs> but two, it's because... I used to, and, and this is the experience that I'm, I'm getting at here. As a kid, we used to play on the phone sometimes. And because it was a pulse, because it was a rotary dial, yeah. if one line is open, that line is still open. Right. Nobody else can call. Yeah, so I was really telling good. her about right. this. So it was that experience that I had that was able to help at that right. moment. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing with technology. And again, I, I am not a technology guy, but mm -hmm. I've had to learn. Right. You know? um, and no one, and even just from the technology side, just knowing what to buy. Okay. You know, we went to body cameras when I first came to the police department, which we were the first department in the county that had them. And a lot of folks, there was a little bit of pushback on it from my folks. And now they, they have saved so many people as far as complaints and things like that. <clears throat> So it has been excellent to have both of you on here, but also to, to learn more about the bag phones and everything too, because I've, I've heard about them. I didn't realize that you had to put them on top of the vehicle or anything, but that, that is very yeah, interesting. They had these little rubber antennas and when, when you were in a certain area, you got no reception. <laughs> right. the top of the side <laughs> road, set it on top of the car to try to get some better reception. And it, that was my first cell phone. So I can I don't forget it. I can just imagine, you know, you or anybody else pulling over and somebody passing by and you're just kind of looking at them like, yeah, yeah I've got to do this. Uh, so. <laughs> it's like phone booths when we had digital pagers. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you probably can't find a phone booth anymore, but you know, it used to be everywhere. Right. That's yeah. The way we call, we'd stop and go find a phone booth and call whoever was paid to this. You know? Yeah, exactly. Or uh, I, something that my friends and I would do sometimes if we had to call someone, you go to, uh, I think it was, you You call collect. Yeah. But when it says, you know, say your name, right. you would say everything right. you had to say Absolutely. right away. Absolutely. <laughs> just, a, just a way to get around it a Absolutely. little bit. Um, it, it has been awesome, sir, to have you sure. on here, the both of you, and just to hear just everything, a little bit of background about yourself as well. So as we go into the wrap up of this segment here, you know, we, we think about the National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week and, and your time working with dispatch as well. You know, how vital is the piece of 911 dispatch to everything that you and your crew do? Well, it, it, it's, it's obviously, number one, a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, we can't do it without them, and nor do I want to do it without them. And, um, you know, a lot of times when we get dispatched to a call, we don't know what we're walking into or driving into, whatever it may be. So we rely on the dispatcher or the telecommunicator 
to get as much information as they can from the caller or caller. Sometimes there's multiple callers calling. Mm -hmm. Um, And that information that gets translated from a telecommunicator to our officers responding could be a matter of life and death sometimes. Right. And I've had the unfortunate experience of having to investigate the murders of many law enforcement officers in this state, including two in this county. Mm -hmm. And I think any telecommunicator who's working that day when something like that happens, and I think back to 9-11 and and when all that stuff was going on that day, um, it's a lasting effect. It don't go away. And, um, you know, some telecommunicators can handle it. Some some get out of the business just Mm -hmm. as police officers and firefighters and paramedics, whoever it may be, that one situation or that one case may dictate to them, like, like you asked me earlier, am I in the right business? Mm-hmm. And some of them realize they're not, they can't handle it. And the other part of, you know, the telecommunicator piece for me is um, not just the information they get to provide to us, but they're also, you know, when you're at a domestic or you're at, some major incident and there's many different things going on at one time you often have to rely on them to get you additional personnel help to get messages out to to, you know another county another state hey uh can you check on this can you check on that and it's all part of the investigation side of things which i spent a large, large part of my career doing is getting help from telecommunicators to other agencies, to other jurisdictions to help us on that one specific case. And even now, I mean, it could be something, and I say it's simple because it's never really simple, but, you know, if we have a wreck where a utility pole gets knocked down, then we rely on them to contact the, because like in, in our town, we have town of Clayton u- utilities, and then we have, Duke Energy and mm-hmm. DOT, and, and we often struggle sometimes figuring out whose is whose, which road it is. It's, you know, does DOT maintain this road or is the town of Clayton? Which electrical pole is maintained? Is it Duke Energy or is it the town of Clayton? And they are a big part of that. And the other part, uh, just from the CAD side of things and the mapping, like our town is very spread out. It's not in ni- one nice little box. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as the town continues to grow, we continue to annex property. So we don't always know when we get dispatched uh, and we rely on them to tell us, Hey, it's yours or it's not yours. Meaning it's somebody else's jurisdiction. Um, And it's hard because there's, there's pieces of like Clayton, for example, that you look at the map and it's all the town of Clayton. And there might be one little blip blurb there that's in the County. You know, and I always tell our folks to respond anyway, right? Um, because everything around us, the town, and, and especially if it's an officer safety thing, but we rely on them quite a bit to, to decipher some of that. Talking about your folks, you know, who, whose is this? Yeah, because we can't always <laughs> tell. And you, right. you know how well, difficult well, that is. Fortunately, uh, we have a great GIS department. Well, that's what we were talking and about. Yeah, it's good with Clayton's yeah. GIS department. They they upload their data to us, and then we upload it. Our GIS department, they work very well together. Yeah, it's do. back to that camaraderie and uh, ability to get things done. We don't we don't worry about the, as he said, he said it doesn't make a difference. It, mm-hmm. right. People don't care about that line on the right. map. They're looking they want for, your help. They, they want right, your exactly, help. yeah. They don't care. And that's, you know, if they get, if everybody gets there and they decide, you know, this is Chief Tart's jurisdiction, then Chief Tart handles it. If right. he gets there and it's a deputy sheriff's position, then the deputy handles it and the chiefs. Yeah, we, and we service the people. We don't, at least, you know, I try to instill them in my folks. Don't worry about jurisdictional lines. If you get called, go. We'll figure that part out later if we need right. to. But you yeah. just, you know, somebody needs your help, you go respond yeah. and we'll figure out the rest of it. But, yeah. um, but it, it, it's just a, it's a partnership that is a critical partnership. Yeah. And, you know, we rely on Brett's folks and the folks down here daily and uh, multiple times a day. You know, it, it, and one thing I tell my folks, and I'm sure he, you know, has the same conversation is, you know, our patrol folks work 12 hours and 
you got to be as alert and ready to go an hour 11 as you do an hour one. It's the same thing with a telecommunicator because it may be the biggest call of your career that comes Mm -hmm. in an hour 11. Right. And you got to be able to handle it. And, you know, your body tends to shut down over time and especially on night shifts and, you you know, the fatigue factor starts building. But you you can't get complacent because complacency, you know, is what gets us in trouble sometimes. And, um, and it's tough. People don't realize, you know, sitting in a 911 center for you guys work 12 hours, 12 hours. Yeah. you know, hour 10 and hour 11. I mean, you, you may have had a quiet night, but mentally it, it, the fatigue starts setting in. It's right. Just, it's it's nature. You know, yeah. It's just the way it's bodies the nature are of the beast. Yes. You still got to be able to go if that call comes in. And, and, and it's, it's difficult especially with younger people. Now you're older folks I and mean, Brett's got a few folks that's been here a while, at least as long as I remember, but yeah. um, you rely on those folks to help these kind of like you were saying early when you were doing it, mentoring mm-hmm. these younger folks to get that instilled in them. So, you know, when that call does come in, they're prepared to handle it. And um, it, it's, we cannot do our job without them. That's just the bottom line. And Perfect. like I said, nor do I want to do it without them because it is a, it, the safety side of it. You can't put, you know, you, there's no way to measure that. There's no way to measure how many times the information that his folks relayed to us before we got there, save somebody's life. Mm-hmm. There's just no way to measure that. Um, and it's like, I tell my folks, you know, visibility and proactivity, there's no way to measure how much crime you could bet prevent by doing that that's correct there's just no way to do it so awesome well that's, thank you that's how i would define it our relationship and what they do for us well, that's perfect sir thank you so so very much uh everybody watching and listening that chief of police here mr greg tart thank you so much absolutely i appreciate it appreciate having you on i didn't stand up when you had first gotten here i've got wires all around me i'm going to stand <laughs> up now so thank you very yes much. sir absolutely appreciate it yes thank you thank, thank you chief yes, sir. appreciate you that we've got our sheriff and Kevin next. I believe so. They, uh, I think, believe uh, Pokey's going to be pulling them in here in just a moment. So we are going to continue on here as we've got uh, folks that are rolling in. And again, just a reminder, we're going to be taking a break at 11 o'clock. And uh, we've got uh, folks that are going to be jumping in here and talking and uh, continuing on. But again, at 11 o'clock, we'll be uh, taking a break. And... Uh, and then we will jump back in at 1130 and we will have some uh, other folks that are jumping in with us here as well. So um, here we are. And Brett, please, some uh, Hi, y'all. introductions. <laughs> um, yeah, I have with me today our Johnson County Sheriff, Mr., uh, Sheriff Steve Bizzle. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Very nice yes, to meet you, sir. And our emergency services director, Kevin Hello. Hubbard. Very nice to meet you. Yes. All right. Excellent. So welcome, welcome. Today we are here and uh, this is uh, day four of uh, everything we've been doing this week. Uh, so my name is Ricardo Martinez and I've got this, uh, I've got a platform here called Within the Trenches podcast where I have dispatchers come on and share their stories. And this is the second year in a row that I have partnered with the North Carolina 911 board to kind of highlight everything that 911 dispatchers do, not so much what they do, but why they do it and how important they are. And it's a pleasure to have the both of you here and to meet you and just to kind of hear, you know, from, from, you know, your opinion, how vital 911 dispatchers are. But if we could, for, for the audience and everything who's watching here live and, and around the world, a little background on yourselves, please. Uh, Steve Bizzle. I'm the sheriff here in uh, Johnston uh, County. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on my seventh four-year uh, term as sheriff. I served in uh, Johnston County under two former sheriffs. I was a reserve deputy, a deputy sheriff, elected sheriff in uh, 1998, and I am one of two of the longest serving, current sheriff serving in the state of North Carolina. Um, love working with our 911 director, emergency services director, the county manager. We're all uh, are a team, mm-hmm. and we're blessed that the county commissioners in our county understand the importance. And, and they actually know that public safety is the number one priority of government. Without the public safety, the schools 
water lines, sewer lines, and everything else is just secondary. Public safety is the number one priority of government. And that's from the White House to the State House to the Courthouse. So, uh, but we're lucky in Johnston County, everybody works good together to provide that public safety. Excellent. Uh, so um, I have to ask really quick though, how did you get into public safety to begin with? Do you come from a family of public safety or just, it was just kind of something that you grew up with that you um, wanted to get into? I, I'm just an old farm boy. My dad was a minister. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's brother ran for sheriff in uh, in the late fifties. And um, my brother applied with, uh, with the highway patrol and I uh, was accepted, but decided not to go. So law enforcement, law and order has always been a part of our family. It's who we are. And as a young boy, um, I used to, you know, to hear about when my daddy's brother ran for sheriff. And I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that one day. So I never lost that vision. So um, I ran for sheriff in uh, 1998. Mm -hmm. And it's not about politics. It's about people. But I was the first Republican sheriff elected in Johnston County in 70 years. And ironically, my granddaddy, my daddy's daddy, worked for the last Republican sheriff in 1928 as a deputy sheriff. Oh, so you, yep. there's that, that connection and yes, almost a, a full circle there yep. as well. And, uh, you know, when, as we were talking earlier, when you get into public safety or any form of it, it just, it kind of gets into your blood right away yeah. and you keep going. It's like being a farmer or um, a truck driver, mm -hmm. you know, it's a calling and it's an honor to be able to serve. That is amazing. I love that. And, and you, sir, a little background on yourself. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, thank you for letting me be here. Of uh, course. Sir, um, my background is primarily actually in the fire service. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in this role with the county for about eight years now as director of emergency services. And uh, so that's uh, emergency medical services, emergency management, and the county fire marshal's office. So I have three divisions in emergency services. Um, but like I said, my primary background is in the fire service. I was in the fire service uh, on the municipal side for about 21 years. Uh, I'm actually a third generation firefighter. My son is a fourth generation <gasps> firefighter. So it's been in my blood my whole life. And uh, that's kind of how I got into it. Oh, wow. Uh, Johnson County's home. Kenley went to high school here. Brett and I went to the same high school. What? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's go, awesome. Go, go, go North Johnson. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Johnson County's home. And, and like the sheriff said, uh, the jail, the public safety center, it, it's it's a great representation of, of the, the our board of commissioners, our county administration, uh, of their dedication to public safety in Johnson County. And, and both of these buildings are state of the art, and we're blessed to have them. I'm blessed personally to know these guys as friends, coworkers. You know, the sheriff Absolutely. said we're a team, and we are. But we're also great friends, and, and and what we do goes goes well beyond what we do for a living. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes well past that, and and, and we're, I'm blessed to have that, and, and we have a great relationship here in Johnson County. So. These were the guys I was talking about earlier that you know we make all all this is possible because we work so well together. Yeah. I can call either one of these guys, the sheriff. You know, um, Kevin, and it, I need this. I, I've asked the sheriff a hundred times, you know, hey, I need, we were moving equipment out here. And and one of the biggest fears we had was moving our Ezinet phone system because we were scared to move it mm -hmm. you know, because it's so important. That's so the sheriff said, well, what can I do to help? Kevin said, what can we do to help? I said, you know, I tell you what, I'll get back with you. So I, we, me and my guys would come up with a little plan and said, Sheriff, can you escort us from the old building to the new building nonstop? Just, you know, so we don't get any, we don't get held up in any traffic. We don't get hit broadside in the truck that's moving that piece of vital equipment. He never blinked. They, they were like, Hey, how can I help? Next thing I know, we've got, we've got county cars escorting us all the way there. The intersections are blocked. You would have thought we were moving a nuclear warhead <laughs> uh, or the gold out of Fort Knox, yeah. but that's the, that's just the and I was getting uh, the phone call. Sure, what in the world is going on? I said we got a phone system that cannot be dead on arrival. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. but anyhow, we yes. made it work. We did, we did, and you know, uh, Kevin and his staff, I, you know, hosting this class for for nine one one. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, he was gracious enough to give him let us use, you know, his EOC, you know, and, but we don't look at it as his right. EOC That's or right. his sheriff's department or mine, not one center. It's ours. Yeah. You know, because the, the, we all know the open invitation is always right. there. We are the public service of the Yes. People. Yes. We understand yes. our roles. It's yeah. not ours. Nope. Right. And uh, it belongs to the people and we all love serving uh, our citizens and we all serve the same people in a different role yes. than me. Yes. But at the end of the day, we're serving the same folks. 
I'll, I'll echo what Kevin said. I, I am I am very blessed to be able to work with these two gentlemen. And, and vice versa. Yeah. Wow. So this is how it's done. Okay. <laughs> and and I, I say that right away because I just, as, as I've said before, I've said it many times, just walking in here, you know, you, you walk into a building and you immediately, you get a vibe, whether it's good or it's bad and, and, and not so much bad or anything, but maybe more so kind of hollow, you know, maybe a little more of like a loneliness type thing. But as soon as I walked in here, it was just, I mean, I'm getting kind of goosebumps talking about it because this is, this is the type of stuff that I talk about where you want to build a culture, not just in the 911 center, but between all disciplines of public safety so that we can all learn from each other. Because otherwise, then you've got, uh, let's just say, for example, you've got law enforcement who is, you know, at you know the throats of dispatch or whatever because they don't understand. But dispatch also, you know, they might not understand them. But when you all come together and you're learning from each other, this is how you build a good culture. And, you know, as Sheriff, uh, the deputies out here speaking back with the dispatcher mm -hmm. by, you know, the radio system, uh, you know, we demand respect. Mm -hmm. uh, the dispatchers talking with the deputies and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we are, we're all on the same uh, team here. Right. We've got to respect each other. And uh, at the end of the day, we want to go home as friends. We want to come back in the morning as friends. And understanding our separate roles, but knowing that we got a duty to provide that uh, public safety. But you're talking about camaraderie. Uh, the county manager in the county here, our finance director, the board of uh, yes. uh, the commissioner, the county attorney. The county attorney. Yes. I mean, we all come together, and uh, you know, we all know our roles, but we find a way to work together. As sheriff, I know sheriff from all across the state, and sometimes I will hear a sheriff say, "I don't go. Uh, I don't." talk to the county manager. I don't talk to the board of commissioners. I don't go to their meetings. And, and I say to them, you know, when it gets to that point, I'm going home, but I'm just blessed as we've used that word a few times here today to have the camaraderie and to have the trust of these gentlemen that I get to work with, along with the board of commissioners, the county attorney, the finance director, uh, the county manager, we're all in it for the people. We, we work for the people and we know that and we understand our role. And we want to give the people a hundred percent. Look what they've given us. Yeah. Their tax money has built a state of the art 911 center, sheriff's office, emergency operations center, a new jail, uh, you know, and the people deserve for us well, to manage their assets and right. to give them 120% every day. And I can assure you if the public could really see behind the scenes and see what our dispatchers actually do, see what Brent does, see what we do as a team uh you know whatever has got to be done we're gonna do it oh man i i love that and uh just again in in this room as well thank you very much Absolutely. because uh as, as i was saying i've there's a couple pictures and stuff but it doesn't do it any justice i mean the screens alone when i was standing next to the really big screen I, <laughs> when i first started out i told the class i said i'm just gonna stand here and like take this in for a moment because i've never been in a room like this or a screen this big where i'm i'm presenting so give me just a moment okay let's go <laughs> And, we and then we jumped that. in. Our, um, our IT team, our county IT yes. folks, have been here all, the whole time, whole time to make sure everything was was good and right. had everything. You they're need. here now. They're here. Yeah, now. They're, they're actually here yeah. now. Yeah. Nothing and, is uh, left our to IT question. Director Jeff Howard, when we when we and his it, staff and his Todd staff, Luck, yep. and they are a part of our team. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. uh, when we did when we did that wall, Jeff Jeff's thing was, man, we want that wow factor. We want that wow factor. And, and Brett yeah. told me yesterday yeah. when I came in here, that was one of the first things he said that you had mentioned was like. Wow, look at this. Yeah. So yeah. we appreciate you being here and, and yep. uh, taking time out of your schedule to, to recognize our folks here in Johnson County. And all as, as a matter of fact, do. I'd like to give you a free nine in the Johnson County Jail so you don't have to drive. Oh, like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You know, going to get that yeah, offer today, didn't I you? mean, you stay I, all weekend. I get a free meal. I get free meals, right? And, <laughs> and stuff. Three. 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 Yeah, three. I am and all about it. It is good. <laughs> Um, if I don't come home, that's why I took the free room. <laughs> yeah, because it's a nine-hour drive. I I drove oh, here wow. from oh, from yeah, Indiana. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I think we all to vote on it. Yeah, I'm going to take You in the jail, but yeah, all right, sounds good. That that is excellent. <laughs> well, as as we go into the closing of this, it has been amazing to have all three of you on here and such, and and, and to to learn a little bit more background. And oh, hold on, hold on, one moment here in the in the comments, someone says it looks like you have a great support system in Johnston County, Brett. That's awesome. 
Thank you. Yes. We do. Um, it's second to none. I'm sorry. It's, it's just second to none. Um, there's no, there's no competition. There's, no. it's, it's, what does it take to, get, what, what do we got to do to get it done? Right. What, what, do, what have we got to do to get to the best end result of whatever we're facing? And at the end of the day, you know, you look at this building, we, we have bragged on our building a little bit because it took a long time to get here. But, right. But it, it really, the building is just that. But when you walk in the 911 center and you look at the quality of the telecommunicators, you look yes. at the dedication, the passion, yes. the compassion, uh, and what they do every day, uh, they got a heart for people. They do a mm -hmm. great job. And for telecommunicators week, uh, you know, I want to say y'all go, uh, y'all are bad to the bone, so to speak. <laughs> Our telecommunicators, uh, the 911, my, uh, I'm an old school, my dispatcher, our dispatcher. Yeah. Uh, this building is nothing without the quality of employees that provide the telecommunicator service uh, to our systems. Uh, and, and I mean, they do a great job and, and it's a calling, uh, you know, it, uh, but we got some good uh, telecommunicators uh, that work for both Fred <coughs> and I, and we're blessed to be able to yes. work with them on a daily basis. So yes. I want to give a shout out to the telecommunicators at the Johnston County 911 Center do an awesome job every day. They are the face of the county. They are the first responders. The, they are the people that the public uh, calls and talks to. They are the first association with uh, county government when uh, people are in an emergency uh, situation. So yeah. they do a great job. Uh, I just like to say, keep up the good work. Perfect. And I, I'd like to echo what Sheriff said, um, you know, Brett and his team, they got, you talk about culture. They love what they do and they're dedicated mm -hmm. to the job they do. And, you know, f in my previous role in the fire service, you know, when, when you're in a dark hallway or, or in a fire, you know, and you key that radio up, they're like our guardian angels. You know, you know, they're there, they're listening to you. They're, they're paying attention to you and they're going to help you the way they can. And Brett and his team are awesome. And, and can't say enough about them. How much we, we always, anytime I had the chance to say, remember, it always starts with 911. You know, it always Amazing. starts on the phone and, and couldn't do it without this cool. folks. So. Thank you both. Thank you both for being on and for that that wrap up as well. That was that was perfect. Thank you. Thank you so so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent to meet you, sir. Enjoy your stay night in the jail. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. I'll thank I'll, you, I'll enjoy that time. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's got, is it, that is amazing. That is amazing. Herman up next from Chowan. Oh, uh, let me see here. Is our North Carolina APCO president? Yes, I believe so. Okay. So we're going to continue on here. This was great. And it looks like I got a free room. So that is awesome. I don't even have to pay for it, man. I get three, uh, I get three meals and, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think I've ever been, uh, offered a room, a free room that turned out to be uh, a jail cell, but you know, I, I would be secure. I'd be safe. I would I would have some good food from what I, they I say. The, the food is great. good. <laughs> I hear the food is absolutely wonderful. Oh, that was hilarious. Thank you, Sheriff. That was that was awesome. I gotta I gotta remember that. <laughs> yes. All right. We he's, continue he's gotta keep on. those those bed that bed population up. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so yeah, so wherever he can get any way I can help. I, that's hey, you know what? We should have put you there instead of a hotel room. I didn't even think. You know, that that would have been something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I would have made for some even more content and yes. everything. It's like, so what, how are you doing? The clink, 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 clink. Yeah, that's like, right. I'm here. So yeah. all right, we've got Pokey back and we have Herman Weiss. That's, That's right. right. Mr. Yes. Herman Weiss. Hello and welcome Hello, back, sir. sir. Good to see you. Yes, you as well. So it's good to have you both. This yes. has been going well already. We've yes. got a bunch of people in here watching, commenting, and it yes. was it was awesome to hear how everyone is a team, not just here, but all of you in this state. So welcome, sir. And uh, for, for everybody who's watching, um, a little background on yourself, please. So my name is Herman Weiss. I am the 911 director for Chowan County. Mm -hmm. I am also the current North Carolina APCO chapter president. Um, been in public safety over 35 years as a firefighter, but doing um, telecommunications since 2010. All right. Excellent. So how did you get in public safety to begin with? Just always had that hankering for fire. Um, always enjoyed it. Got into that when I was in high school and just haven't gotten out of it. And then started with a private ambulance service doing dispatching and absolutely fell in love with it 
um, and can't see myself doing anything else. Wow. I, I think that's one of the things that, um, I think that's one of the things that we, when you get into, it just happens to get into your blood right away. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do here really quick is I want to, I want to switch and just have it uh, about right there. There, there, okay. we there we go. And uh, it, it sounds like they're watching it out there. They so they're are, able they to are. hear it and stuff too. So, they're okay. Hanging on to every word. Now, <laughs> they're really paying attention yes. So, yeah. so, <laughs> selfie thing. Yes. Um, but that's a lot. A lot of people say the same thing, you know, when they jump into it, whether they're they're jumping in green or, you know, of course, they're, you know, a different generation of public safety. As soon as they get in there, it gets into their blood. So was there a moment, though, that you remember uh, early on or whichever where you just kind of felt like, you know what, I am in the place that I'm supposed to be? So when I first started my career in, in, in dispatching, I mean, in working with a private ambulance service, I mean, it was just something that I was. I felt like it was it was my niche, mm -hmm. um, and then got into the nine one side and just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it was like you know what I'm home. This is this is where I'm meant to be, um, and and as I said, I can't see myself doing anything different. Um, I, so one of the ladies that's coming up later, mm -hmm. uh, two years, she's beaming out there, just talking about what she's doing. So that's our next generation. So what's yes. is they, they stay engaged. So I think that, that that niche, I think that's what she, what she's found. So trying, as, as Pokey said, the younger generation, I mean, trying mm -hmm. to teach the younger generation to, to fall in love with it. I mean, mm -hmm. and helping them any way you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has just been one of my things is I'm there to help. Um, you tell me how I can help you and you tell me how I can make your career succeed. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, and, and as Brett and them, all the others said, it's not about me, but it's about them. It's about the telecommunicators, um, how we can make their, as, as she said, glow and gleam and make mm -hmm. them smile every day when they want to come into work. Right. And, and, and also, you know, just being kind of a, a wealth of knowledge as well for a lot of the folks that are coming in and to be able to share, uh, you know, certain stories, experiences, and just how all of it works. And I, I shared a story early on where it had to do with, uh, with the dot matrix printer and the teletype and, uh, and, and how people would look at it. And they would say, what, what is this? And I mm -hmm. said, um, it's a teletype. And like, What's a teletype, you know, and then, but also at the same time, because, um, some of those newer folks that were coming in, they were so used to using CAD, which for those wow. who are watching and listening uh, that are from the general public, that is a computer-aided dispatch. It's the the software that we end up putting all the information in to be sent out to the officers that are going out and, and such. And the mapping side of that, too. And, and there's the mapping yes. side as well, yes. yes. And and what they would say was, so our, our system's down. What do we do now? And I pull out a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, and I'd go, here. And they'd go, are you serious? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, how else are you going to do it? Because we don't have punch cards. And then that and, would throw them that, for a leap And then what's more. a punch card? Right, yes. right. So, <laughs> so we've got the history as well as we're, we're in that technology age now. Right. You know, and, and coming into it, I, I saw the the old time TTY where you actually put the handset in there. Yes. And then you typed <laughs> out oh, your message. Word. So, yes, yes, I've seen that. Yes. Um, yes. Never used it, but I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But. So at, at my old center, we had uh, one on either side and it was the same way. It had, you know, the phone that you put on there and uh, it was we would start typing stuff and it was G.A. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and some of the other folks would say, how often do you use this? And I would say, um, I mean, not a lot. Not enough to be yeah. proficient. <laughs> right. So they're telling me that we've got oh, about a minute here. So what I want to get from you, sir, is. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing this for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, but also, you know, we celebrate not just for next week, but every single day. So just in your opinion, going into the wrap up of this portion here, how important is this? So it's very important. I mean, that the, the telecommunicators get recognized. Um, that's something that is, is dear to me to get the telecommunicators classified. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as Pokey knows, and a lot of people know that in the state of North Carolina, telecommunicator is not classified. Mm -hmm. um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Pokey, but on the national level, a telecommunicator is classified as a clerical worker. Yeah, for, from a federal standpoint. From a federal standpoint, standpoint they are yeah. clerical, as, as cler clerical. Mm -hmm. And to me, we need to be clarified as first responders. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that 
Um, one of the congressmen came through our county during Thanksgiving and was handing out pies. And I pulled him aside and I said, look, I said, you know, we've got to get classified. Mm -hmm. he, and he was like, you're right on, you're right on. Mm -hmm. So he left the building and he called me back later that night and he said, you know what, I'm going to get on that bill. I'm going to co-sponsor that bill. And I said, good. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's no, it's, it's not just what I did, but it's what all the other telecommunicators need in the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So yes, next week is all about the telecommunicators. Mm -hmm. So that is very important that they are recognized every day. Perfect. Thank yes. you very, very much. Thank you all. I think we've got another wonderful group coming. So yes. So they're going to they're going to be jumping in. Yes. Yes. So, yes. yes. They're going to be jumping okay. in. Thank, thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Appreciate you having me, sir. Uh, yes. Of Who's course. Next? We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. So, who's next, David? Who's yeah. in the hospital? Uh, oh, and oh, we've got a room full of folks. Come on in right there. Somebody, somebody, somebody here. You all have to hang. All right. We've got more folks coming in. All right, yeah, we'll we'll slide this like, way like a little like bit. Here we go. Yeah. Do you, do you need and then, uh, yes, yeah, scoot in just a little more here. <laughs> scoot, scoot. There we it's go. Scoot. There we go. Now, now I've got all of you. So when. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you scooch in the south now. That's right. Oh, scooch. That's right. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. We were we were talking about how there's different Hang terminologies on. and such, and uh, so it's it's scooch, but also uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Leah, out of Alabama. She's the 911 board uh, head over there. She would tell me she goes, when you create uh, something for us, instead of saying click, we say mash. And mash, I said, what? yeah, yeah, that is <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. As so I was, I said, okay, if I do another training video, I'll have to add that in there right. as well. Yes. <laughs> so, um, as we've got one microphone, so when, when you're talking, just kind of talk towards the microphone and project as well. Use your dispatch voice. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we're currently live right now. We've been live all this time and everything, and we're just going to get some information from you. So, um, starting with you, your name and, uh, and your title, and, and we'll go along and we'll just, We'll, we'll, we'll talk here. <laughs> can we use your microphone? Oh, yeah. You know what? We can, be... yeah, we can, there you we go. can do it this way. There we go. Okay. My name is Beverly Herring, and I am the 911 supervisor, also public outreach for Johnston County. And I've been with Johnston County for um, almost 30 years now. Amazing. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm Morgan Harris. Uh, I've been with Johnston County for about 17 years, and uh, I'm the operations manager. So. All right, excellent. Um, Zach Alexander, I've been with Johnston County for about 14, 15 years. Um, I'm the 911 support services manager. All right, excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you all for, for joining us here. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to have you here, learn a little bit more about you as we're going through this. We're, it's funny because we're doing this almost like rapid fire as, <laughs> I, as I'm going through this as well, just to make sure. Lots I, of interesting to think <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. making sure I've got everybody going on time and everything. So um, how, did you, how did you get into public safety to begin with? As growing up, I always was interested in um, public safety. Um, when the fire trucks went out, when the ambulance went out, I was, um, I was like, where are they going? And then my dad actually bought me a scanner whenever I was like 16 years old. And then I got to know some of the people in the fire department. And then I met, I went to school with um, a previous employee here in Johnston County. And he kind of got me going, get me interested in it. And I came up here one weekend and to see that person. And I was just, amazed at everything that went on. This was 30 years ago mm -hmm. and it just kind of just progressed from there. I started hanging around, I guess. Back then you could hang around and it was kind of like more of a, I don't say a hangout, but people, you could hang around some not have to be employed. And so I hung around and I learned everything. And whenever I actually got put on part time, I was already trained with everything. So I was in college and, um, I stayed part time. And the week before I graduated, the 911 director at that time, he said, what are you going to do when you graduate? I said, I got to find a real job. <laughs> and he said, I have one for you. And I told him, I said, I can't work at 911 um, because it was back then it was a really fun, fun job. And I I didn't think of it as a real job. Yeah. But how well I know different now. But um, I told him I couldn't work at 911. My dad had sent me to college and I have a four-year degree and I got to get a real job. And um, 
I do have a real job. Right. Yes. So I'm so glad that I stuck with it. And um, but that's how I actually really got started. And and it's been wonderful. And, and you're here. That is that is excellent. You you stuck with it and everything. How did you uh, let me ask you this uh, question really quick before we, we go on with the same questions as well. What did it feel like? When you finally got in there because as you said you you basically knew the job already right you know you were trained and everything but now it's your turn and you're getting in there did you feel nervous at all going in or were you just like ready to go um when i first started and i was part-time i was with the sheriff's department mm -hmm. and with the sheriff's department it's a it was a little different because 911 in the sheriff's office um in johnston county is separate um but the sheriff's office you only had four deputies working at the time and i don't even know how many we have now working at the time probably 12 but there was only four deputies and you knew each person and it was it was something personable to each of your officers and so whenever i graduated from college i switched over to 911 and i didn't know anybody so it was a different um group of people i wanted to stick with the people that i knew yeah and then when i went to 911 it was a different group of people but they also became family and once you were, once I was in there, that the firemen and the EMS people, they all also became family. So it was a little different in the transition, but um, a very good transition. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and how about you? How did you get into uh, public safety? Now I wanted to begin with. I did not hang around on one or anything. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have uh, I didn't have any background in it really. Um, uh, I'm from the western part of the state, and mm -hmm. uh, I used to work in restaurants and hotels. And so I managed a hotel before I moved down here. And uh, my brother, he was the uh, fire chief in Smithfield, and uh, he got me started. And he said, hey, you might want to look at this. It's a pretty good career. Um, he wanted me to have something that was always going to be there. Um, we had I had watched him growing up go through, you know, working at factories and getting laid off and things like that. He said, this is a job that will always be there. He said, right. no matter what, every month. You're going to get paid like clockwork. And I said, that sounds great to me. I said, well, <laughs> right. and I had been through changes with restaurants and it's all, you know, very wishy-washy and, you know, mm -hmm. people hands change with the business owners and things like that. And it's never a good time. So, but uh, anyways, I got started. Uh, they gave me a chance and, and uh, been here ever since. And Zach and I actually started on the same day. We, uh, we started at the same time and uh, we've both moved uh, up the ranks he left me for a little while and then he came back but, how uh, dare you yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> but uh we we both uh you know finally you know moved off the floor and stuff and uh we're, we're in uh, uh management roles now and uh it's great um you know i I've, I've enjoyed my time here uh it's funny how life turns out you never think you know when you're 17 18 years old 20 years old you don't, you don't really know what you're going to do and, right. and it's funny you know i always joke i say you know 10 years ago i said if you told me i was going to be working for 9-1 and working with the police i would have laughed at you and said, no you're crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here i am yeah so, you know yeah so zach before i get to you here i i want to ask you a question really quick yeah. because of your prior experience yeah. Do you feel like in any aspect it kind of prepared you would you end for what you ended up doing in in 911 with Actually, some of the folks a like lot. the interaction and so anybody that's out there that's you know listening and, and watching that you know doesn't know anything about 911 and, and worked in any type of uh uh you know food service or, or hospitality industry it helps a lot because our job is customer service at the end right. of the day yeah um the people that are calling in yes they have emergencies but they're still a customer and not every call that you're going to get is an emergency. I mean, it's if uh, as long as you're nice to the people when they call in there, you're going to be successful in this job. You know, as long as you're like the sheriff said, you got to be compassionate. You got to you got to care about you know the people that are on the other end of the phone. So exactly, you got to you have to be human. Yeah, you have to be yeah, human and, and human. actually care, and, and and you know that goes a long way. Um, mm -hmm. We've we've hired several folks that uh, had similar backgrounds as me, and they they've been rock stars. Um, we just hired a girl from. She worked at a local restaurant here and, and we gave her a chance and she's doing great now. I mean, you know, it's just good to see those kind of transitions happen. So amazing. And then, Zach, how did you get into uh, public safety? We're, we're we're wrapping up with with your piece here on how you got into public safety. <laughs> so my dad was a Raleigh police officer for 30 years, retired from there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> when I was younger. And he was a sergeant, so every time they had, you know, a hurricane or anything, he always got stuck in the EOC, which at the time was co-located with Raleigh Wake 911. Um, and so I've got got to see that side of thing very, very early on. 
Um, and then when I graduated, kind of like Beverly, you know, trying to find that job. Um, my dad was the one that found that Johnston County was hired and recommended look into it and been here ever since other than the three, four years that I left Morgan <laughs> to go work for EMS with the county. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, I wound up back here. Amazing. And this is where he wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hated I left, but yeah. Yeah, glad that I came is, back. That is awesome. Uh, thank you, the three of you, for being here. And as they're bringing someone, I think they're going to bring another one here. Um, just really quick, you know, for, for Beverly, I just want to say we were talking yesterday a bit, and you are you're getting close, right? And we were just talking about that wealth of knowledge. And if you ever want to be on an individual episode, I would love to share your story and uh, just kind of capture that wealth of knowledge. Thank you for your years of service and just everything. And to the three of you and everyone here in the county, thank you for what you do. And, and happy early National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all right. Coming. Thank you. So we are going to bring in a, another um, another group of folks here in just one moment, and this has been excellent as always. All right, so we've got some folks jumping in here. This just isn't a group. This is the real yes. heroes. This is the real heroes right here okay. from Harnett County. Now. All right, so we've got we've got a, a group of folks from Harnett County, and uh, we're going to see how to how we do this here. All right, so. If you can, if you can move the microphone just this way a little more towards you, all right, and pull it closer to you there, and then for you, if you can move in closer here with me, and then we'll share this microphone. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is awesome. Look at that. And I'm doing a selfie there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and Ricardo, you know what I have to do. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So we've got, uh, let's see, our first break is going to be at 11. So I I don't know if they told you or this is this is just us until 11. They did not say so. We're going to assume. <laughs> All right. Well, we're just we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do this and we're going to go forward and uh, I'm going to adjust the audio as we go along. So starting here because your names are not here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so down the line, your names, please, and uh, your title and, and where you're out of. My name is Caroline. I'm a telecommunicator with Harnett County Sheriff's Office. Right. And my name is Sierra. I'm also with the Harnett County Sheriff's Office as a telecommunicator. All right, excellent. My name is Ashley. I am a telecommunicator at the Harnett County Sheriff's Office as well as a trainer. I'm Deanna from the Harnett County Sheriff's Office, um, and I'm also a trainer. All right, excellent. I, I like how you're slightly like you're trying to hide, <laughs> but in the, in the, in the I was going to say in, in, the, in the camera we can see you. Like, yeah. uh, Travis, the communications manager for the Harney County Sheriff's Office. Travis, yes, I was going to say I, I'm pretty sure we've been to conferences and I yep. I know you. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome. It is awesome to have you here, and uh, you know I've been I've been out here all week and um, in, in the state doing a lot of different things, recording episodes, as well as teaching. And uh, I hope uh, for you that were in the class yesterday that, that you had fun, that you learned a lot of different things. And you know there was a lot of powerful stuff going on. And I guess what I want to get from all of you is, you know, I, it's, a, it's a week next week, right, that we, we're celebrating. But, you know, a lot of us, we, we just we celebrate each other every single day, or at least try oh, to, because yeah. we Very are a family. So, yes. so what does this mean to you? Like each one of you, let's just go down the line and we'll start here with you. I mean, I think every day we try to, like, we build each other up every day. Um, and I think especially what you do with the I am 911, it's just very crucial to not only, like, our mental health, but being able to share our stories, our experiences with those who understand, it makes a difference. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And kind of building off what she said, we love each other every day, even though it's once a, week, uh, a year for a week's time that we get are able to, you know, 
kind of sort of recognize not only our girls that are in the center and guys that are in the center, but we can recognize throughout the 911 community, not only nationally through the United States, but also internationally. Um, it's really cool and being able to have a platform like you do to, you know, kind of sort of recognize and be like, look, we know your struggles, but we also know your your battles, but your wins. Right. And so that's something that is really awesome to be able to share and, and experience with other telecommunicators. And especially whenever it's down to a single week where you're like, yes, mm -hmm. we we are 911, mm -hmm. but we are all 911 in a whole. Mm -hmm. And that's what is really cool. Awesome. But even more, I think it's the fact that it adds humanity back to it. Mm -hmm. um, so many people just assume that we can be heartless. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it sounds like we are, but people tend to, forget that we go through those things too. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like you had said yesterday, painting that mental image is sometimes <laughs> worse than actually seeing it. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you have men and women day at day in and day out that are living through that stuff and then making themselves available for the next person that calls, it plays on the phrase of your worst day is my every day. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And so the fact that there is the recognition and that it's building and that people are starting to see, wow, they do so much means a lot to all of us. Like, I'm not just speaking for myself when I say that. Right. It's fantastic. But even more, none of us do this for the recognition. We right. all do it because exactly. it's a calling and we love it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, and, and building off of it, which I was Snip not here. A little bit. I, Sorry. Want to get I want to get Travis here. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I was not here yesterday, but they said that it was absolutely amazing. And I hate I missed it. But like they said, like, we are a family and the one week a year where basically the public like, oh, it's TC week, you know, like, what is that? So but um, we're actually trying to do a community outreach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes, I have sent flyers and we've visited a few schools and some career what are they called? The career, the career day, the career at days, at elementary high schools, schools high schools. So just trying mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. out in our community, like we're people, mm -hmm. right? Like, yes, yes, and mm -hmm. you know we do have feelings too. And like she said, sometimes we can sound heartless, and but um, but I mean we all love what we do. We mm -hmm. basically take care of each other because we mm -hmm. spend more time with these. I spend more time with these people <laughs> uh -huh. than I do with our families. So. We, we work to right. pay for our homes uh, that we get to visit. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But it's just like one big, most of the time, happy family. Because we do argue. <laughs> not gonna lie. But like siblings. Right. Like, like, like siblings. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Or that old, or that old married couple oh, that you see yes. sitting on the floor. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that is great. I was actually, um, was it you that said when um, me and Brie were arguing? Yes. Just like, Mom and dad are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that was a long time ago. Though. That, that is awesome. Yeah. It's and fantastic. Still best friends. Still yes. 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 Mm -hmm. but, what about you, Travis? Uh, so that's, from a manager standpoint, um, we realize that they do not get the recognition um, from anybody, really, um, that they deserve, right? Um, so Telecommunicator Week for us allows our partner agencies to recognize them for what they do, um, providing food, snacks, um, or even just um, several come by to just visit. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. from the fire departments, um, EMS. Um, so it allows them the opportunity to say thank you for what you do for us because the other 51 weeks out of the year, they don't normally get that. Um, so for me, that's uh, very important for them. Mm -hmm. Do you do any uh, themes? Uh, yeah, so the one that I'm most excited about this year is um, 10 Code Day. Yes. Wow. Just, just like a 10 so, Code. Yes. Just like a 10 Code. Yep. Just like a 10 code. Um, I have my idea. So, <laughs> she does. I also have mine. Um, it's a here. surprise. Just to see what, what's gonna, um, how they're going to show up. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So for, for those who are watching and listening who might not know a, a lot of the 10 codes, because there's a lot of people in the general public who yeah. are probably mm -hmm. watching right now as well. Yeah. Give us an example of a, of a 10 code that someone could potentially use. Um, 
I was about to say one of them is like a 1072 for us is like an arrest arrestee or a, mm-hmm. a prisoner or mm-hmm. something like that. So you can dress up in like prisoner garbs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I that's just that. one of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is yeah. that is definitely thinking outside of the box. Very much so for us. Um, you know, we would have themes, but it would it would be like you know movies or decades or. Mm-hmm. Well, we did that last year, I too. think, but we're yeah. doing mm-hmm. sports this year and dress like the year you were born. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my! Very <laughs> See, uh, I I love that. That is pretty awesome. And yeah. those who are watching and, and everything right now. Oh wait, Randy over here says ten nine. <laughs> <laughs> And, and another well, that's mine. Says, you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another person says, uh, "Dress like a ten code." Love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Heck yeah, man! Yes. I, I love that as well. I, I wish I could go back in time and just tell myself that. <laughs> yeah. You can totally come join us. It's fine. Yes. Dude, I am all about it. Heck that yeah! Awesome. Yeah. Monday. Yes, Monday. Mm-hmm. We'll come pick you up from the airport. That's right. <laughs> yes. so we'll reschedule your flight. It's fine. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I I drove here, so I'm in my own oh, car. So cool. I yeah, you're driving. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that that is really cool, and also to be able to uh, dress like the year you were born. So mm-hmm. I was I was born in eighty one, so I can just imagine. Oh, see, I don't feel like that now. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in eighty two. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yes, you can just dress in some you know neon colors and mm-hmm. just, just look red. Make my hair a little bit bigger. Yeah. Bigger. Right. 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 Blow it out. Right. 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 Blow it out. Yeah. <laughs> So what are what are some of the other things during the week that you guys end up doing? Because you know, there's so there's this decades, there's this the awesome ten code and everything. Um, do you have uh, like other disciplines of public safety come in and just have dinners, or do they drop you off a lot of food to where a lot of you are maybe looking at it and thinking, oh, I gotta have a you know a sweet or something? Like, why did you bring so much? The park Raven rangers yes. bring in a laundry basket of yes. just. Snacks, yes. snacks, snacks, energy drinks, energy drinks, energy drinks yes. popcorn, yes. cake. We love our it. Raven oh, Rock guys. Love our Raven girls. Rock guys. <laughs> and then one of the fire departments is normally Spout Springs. Mm-hmm. That brings the edible arrangement. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We get what? a whole edible oh, yeah. arrangement. It's yeah. great. It is and fantastic. The, um, the grandma or the aunt that always. Granny C. Granny yes. C. Granny mm-hmm. C. Yes. She, so yes. we actually have a uh, sign up. Genius mm-hmm. now that they can go oh, in yeah, and, and pick a day that they want to sponsor. Mm-hmm. That way, we don't have everybody on one day. Yes. Kind of spread yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. then you end up having everything there and stuff starts to go bad. Yeah. Like, Should I eat this? Yeah. Should yes. I take a chance? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all gain like 10 pounds by the end of the few <laughs> weeks. <laughs> And we are very fortunate to have a great very community, so. first responder mm-hmm. community, that mm-hmm. fire departments, EMS, yes. all them that come and and just celebrate us. Yes, and it's yes. it's really good. It's it really is. interesting and, and fun to meet all of them because mm-hmm. we don't always get to meet them. Yep. Yes. Very true. So yes. it's it's fun for them to come in, meet us, us meet them, and kind of sort of socialize for the mm-hmm. little bit of time that we we do get to mm-hmm. see them in there, and we're not busy. And start yeah. putting faces to names and yes. numbers and voices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it allows them that personal. Yep, face-to-face interaction versus just a voice that they talk on the radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. No, exactly, because I, I remember towards the, it might have been two or three years when it was when I was uh, uh, still ditch, uh, dispatching before I left, there was an officer who walked up because I had filled out some paperwork for him, and he walks up, and I, I look up, and I look at him, and I saw his badge, and I went, <laughs> dude, and he goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know your voice, man. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said, but yeah. we've yeah. never met in yeah. all of these years that yeah. I've been here. And he goes, I have a long way to go to the city. He yeah. goes, but I just, I for some reason, I decided to come and and here you are. You're the one who's yeah. doing this. So it's like, it's you. Yeah. It's like, you know, chariots of fire running towards you. <laughs> but, but it happens that way, yeah. right? That, that mm-hmm. way, right? Where, you know, you've got people that are, you talk to you know them by a voice mm-hmm. and, and and not to get uh, a little deep here for a moment but like when you're on the radios um and i know you probably do this a lot the way we did at, at my dispatch center as well if something happens you're listening to voices to narrow down yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. who is the one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and i've told people that before and they're like i don't understand why you do that or, or how significant it is like, you have no idea yeah. how significant yeah. that is because you're at the edge of your seat 
wondering, mm-hmm. thinking, and you identify those voices. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the tone the of their tone. voice. And the yes. Tone, yes. Right. Because you can say, oh, this is his everyday, like mm-hmm. he's aggravated, or oh, we need to get help to him. Yeah. He so is so extra flipped still, today. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like, going on. He needs help. We yeah. need to get him somebody just by his tone of voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can just tell the severity of the situation by right. that. So as we go into the wrap up of this, because we've got about a minute before we go on this first break, what, um, I guess, how, how does it feel to all of you to have these moments of recognition, not just this week, but especially next week during the actual week, and then every single day going on? How does, how does that feel to have that recognition from those who are finally starting to understand and know what it is that you do? Humbling. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you know humbling. we don't do it for the recognition. Yeah, right. Yes. But exactly. it's, it is humbling. Yeah. Yes. And then and then when you do get recognized, like by the community, and then you know some of us end up on the news. And yes. yes. All this, I'm like, it's <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> thank you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Can, Can I go back to my yeah, corner? Yeah, now? Right, so, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh shucks. Yeah, oh, shucks. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> As yeah. like Deanna was saying earlier, how we do our community, we've started getting more out into the community mm-hmm. and it's nice to be, I know I went to, they had a Coates night out for our mm-hmm. Coates Police Department oh, yes. and it was so heartfelt from the community coming up. It's like, oh, thank you for what you do. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we, we mm-hmm. didn't know who you were. Yep. We knew your voice. Mm-hmm. Like if we have to call, we know your voice, but we mm-hmm. don't know who you are. Yeah. And, and they was, don't exactly know all that we do. Yeah, exactly. Like, we don't just answer the phones. Mm-hmm. Like don't just answer the phones. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very popular yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it was, it just felt so good to be there and the little kids coming up mm-hmm. and yes. being like, what do you do? And mm-hmm. you know, we have a whole setup for them mm-hmm. and coloring books and everything. And it, it's like maybe that's the next generation yeah. that yeah. saw right. us. Mm-hmm. Right. And I had and I had actually visited um, Bullish Creek Elementary. Um, shout out to you guys. <laughs> uh, visited a bunch of fifth graders, and they were absolutely amazing. Asked all kinds of questions, and it was just teaching them about what we do. Mm-hmm. Like it. It was great. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and I look forward to visiting other schools, yes. even on uh, the high school level. So we, would, yeah. a couple of us had gone out to Harnett Central High School. And spoken with a lot of the juniors and seniors that were getting ready to graduate because we just recently lowered our hiring age to 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the amount of people that were just kind of like, wow, was fantastic. And just being mm-hmm. able to talk to them about it and being like, so this is what we do. This mm-hmm. is what it looks like. This is what we see mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. you called 911. And they're just like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, right. it's fantastic. Because at that Absolutely age, fantastic. I didn't know anything about this right. job at that age right. uh, well, mm-hmm. at all. I think like, that a lot of times that you you look online for a job posting and you see telecommunicator and you're like, oh, that sounds cool just reading the job description, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what all that actually entails. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, this allowing them to go and visit and do this community outreach really is uh, opening to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It is. Amazing. Very much so. Well, thank you very, very much. I, I will say this really quick. Angie with the, the 911 or North Carolina 911 board, she says, love the public outreach that Harnett County is doing. So mm-hmm. kudos to all yes. of you and uh, happy National Telecommunicators Week. Thank you. For thank you. Week <laughs> and for what you do every single day. And that's a wrap for this first part. We are going to come back here in about 30 minutes. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, my, because my, my leg, because I'm old, you know, <laughs> I'm just playing. I mean, I am low. Uh, I am old. But my leg is not falling asleep. But we'll be right back here in just a moment. You guys can hang tight with me for a moment here. <laughs> 